<laughs> Adam, Adam, with- if we've learned anything from Catherine's segments, we can't <laughs> ask questions. <laughs> Wasn't there something with Egypt or something? I'm still in the 1800s. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, but you're in five. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, I political. gave up five minutes ago, Adam. <laughs> I know. Um, <laughs> so are we ever going to come back to Mozambique or is this going to be the one thing that our friends and family know about Mozambique? Commonwealth, Commonwealth, the former empire, now Commonwealth. Is it relevant? Probably not. But why not give this part a shot? Stay tuned. Here comes Uncommonwealth, the podcast. And we are live. Welcome to the virtual Uncommonwealth podcast studios. Thanks for joining us, friends and family. As always, I'm here with my amazing co-hosts, Adam Mueller, Catherine Rawlinson, and Piers Morton. My name is Jimmy HVD, and we're here to have some fun. Hello, Jimmy. Hey. Do you think that only friends and family listen? The podcast. I want to talk about a, uh, a Commonwealth country that I don't think has come up yet uh, on the pod, Mozambique. Ooh. I don't think we've talked about the beak yet. Um, <laughs> the beak. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> the beak. Well, the beak is the beak. A, okay, wet the beak, baby. And the reason <laughs> I want to talk about it. <laughs> There was one fact about it that jumped out at me that I want to get to. So let me just by way of background, it's in southeastern Africa. Um, there's about, about population, about 30 million people joined the Commonwealth in 1995. The capital and largest city is called Maputo. And uh, it, it achieved its independence from Portugal in 1975. So it was a Portuguese colony. Now, sometimes you're like doing research for the podcast and you come across something and you're like, that can't be right. How is that true? So in Mozambique, the most popular sport is football a.k.a. soccer in America. That's not surprising because it's true of around the world. But the second most popular sport in Mozambique Ooh. is roller hockey. Yes. Mozambique it actually came roller fourth hockey. at the 2011 Roller Hockey World Cup. Get nice. out. How does Get that happen? Out. That is the, the most astonishing thing of all the astonishing things I have heard on this podcast. Isn't no. that just... Roller, roller hockey? hockey, like roller on roller skates, playing on roller blades or roller skates. I'm not. Is I think this it, a it's popular be... thing? I've never even heard well, of it. It's the like second it's a... biggest sport in Mozambique, Catherine. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's a popular thing. <laughs> Wait, it's I mean, not I've, even I've the known... biggest sport in Mozambique, and they're fourth in the world. It's the second most. But yeah, they they came four in 2011 at the uh, Roller Hockey World Cup. They came fourth, which there's sounds There's not a lot impressive. of athletic talent getting funneled into That's... roller hockey. I whoa, whoa, to, whoa, whoa! I used whoa. to play very serious roller hockey. <laughs> People that are Seriously? into it, yeah, oh, I can yeah. see that. And ice hockey. Um, Wait, you actually played roller hockey, Piers? It was very competitive. Yeah. Okay, nice. so oh, yeah, yeah. okay, well, that... do you play in New York? Um, yeah, in the summer, in the city. Now that someone I know has done it, it's a thing. There's that schoolyard down in the West Village where people play. Love it. 30 seconds ago, Catherine was like, this is the dumbest sport ever. <laughs> Piers plays it. She's like, honestly, oh I'm surprised God, okay. it doesn't get more coverage. It should. They should ESPN <laughs> should really she focus. She turned on a dime. Yeah. Man, she? She That's like, it's, like, it's almost as if we said Hugh Jackman plays. <laughs> I'm glad you're so supportive of your friends and co-hosts, Catherine. Is there a log- There's no logical path as to why Mozambique would pick up roller hockey. I wonder if they had just like, you know, a couple of super talented people. And then because like that snowball positive feedback loop, because they were doing well, Mozambique started getting behind it, which made them do better, which made it more popular. I kind of want to know if they're importing Canadians to play for them. Oh. Like there, there's the odd, you know, the odd country in the Olympics you'll be watching. And then, then some guy who couldn't make the U.S. swim team shows up for them because he's got a great grand aunt. Right. Once lived in yeah. Malta, or someone from Mozambique like someone. lived in the U.S. for a while and went yeah. back or something. And Do ice skating skills translate well it, to roller? Yeah, hockey? yeah. I can't believe I just said ice hockey or ice. Sk- it's it's just hockey. Everything else needs an, a word, an adjective, or a noun before it. <laughs> Because it's like, it was a Portuguese colony. So the Portuguese aren't known for roller hockey. So no. it's not from the Portuguese. It must be from people that maybe lived in North America and went back. And Is there a country the nearby known for it that may have accidentally just rolled into Mozambique? I'm trying to think. <laughs> I should look up who nice. the top three in 2000. I don't know who the top three were. 
I just feel like you have a lot of questions, hockey, Adam, and not a lot of answers, you know? Oh, is this our opportunity oh to ask wow. Adam? Is that the specific? <laughs> yeah. You are black. glowing, baby. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Catherine sensed an opportunity to strike, and she took it. Did she ever? <laughs> oh, you hadn't pre-prepared that fact, Adam? <laughs> Honestly, not um, Commonwealth pod quality. <laughs> well, here's... Here's an interesting fact. The, uh, the 2011 Men's Roller Hockey World Cup was played in San Juan, Argentina, mm. but was originally supposed to be held in Mozambique. So they're clearly like all what in happened? on the roller hockey. So who, guess who won? Uh, the team, that, I'll give you a hint. The team that won is the team that beat Mozambique in the semifinals. Oh, because we all knew USA. that. Lithuania. I mean, none of the, no, it was Spain. <laughs> Why do you always say Lithuania? You, you one day, it. one day it'll be right. And when it is, Wait. I'll look pretty Wait, damn Spain? impressive. Uncommon wealth. Oh, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. We are going to go down. We seem to find ourselves down here quite a lot. Uh, they're just a very, very fascinating, uh, interesting folk uh, down in New Zealand. Which this is, uh, this is too much coverage now. Which, I think. which if someone. <laughs> Yeah, it's getting out of control. Which, if you know, someone was able to say, "Oh, I bet you can't find it on a map," you would be forgiven for not being able to find it on a map. New Zealand. It is frequently left off maps. Oh. <laughs> Good. That's it's what they deserve. Frequently <laughs> left off. Uh, major uh, perpetrators. If you have that of sexy this, of an accent, you don't need to be. Oh, on. shut up. So New Zealand, which is larger than the United Kingdom and over two thirds the size of Japan and Germany, uh, is completely left off most world maps. And offenders include the Smithsonian Museum in the in America, the United Nations map, and the British Broadcasting Company. When they ever show a map, New Zealand <gasps> is nowhere to be found. Wow. Still, is still to this part day, of the British Commonwealth. I think still we should make day. it standard. Actually, I think that should be the standard. <laughs> For all maps, it's clearly the better way to represent the continents of the well, earth. Are the elves and dwarves and Mordor just trying to hide? Yeah. Is that what it is? They are so bummed out about it in Australia that they started a uh, global campaign, hashtag get NZ on the map. The Australian started, started that? No, New Zealand. Oh, North okay. Australia's giggling themselves to death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple hundred Australia miles. Australia wants south. to switch the northern and southern hemispheres on the globes. They the do? Yeah. So the toilets spin. Really? The they right said, like, way? we want our maps to have Australia on the top. Just flip north and south so that we can but be But then it'd the be upside down. No way. That's crazy. That's true. They must have been so drunk when they came up with that. <laughs> that's fair. Hopefully they weren't riding horses. <laughs> but uh, Jacinda Arden, their prime minister, and the, the flight of the Concorde star, Reese Darby. Oh, I'm uh, sure he has some pull. Got a national <laughs> UN. campaign going. <laughs> 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 to, uh, they, they sent around some global uh, ad to get uh, New Zealand on the map. And it, it has not worked. No one's listened. Uh, no one cares. They remain. That's hilarious. Think you're like, are there like the flights void. from LA to New Zealand that just miss it? Because they don't have it. It's not on the map. <laughs> yeah. <it's laughs> just fly right over it. <laughs> oh, shit. The GPS system's like, well, we're uh, just moving on. Good, come to Australia, hang out. But yeah, millions to, I guess, 10 million Do, people. Is, no is there cares. like, is there any rationale or is it, uh, you know, other than it's just they're easier just to- very, uh, when, when you do a flat map of the globe, they're just really unfortunate where they lie in the Pacific Ocean. Right. Interesting. What, when you, when you expand, you know, when you, when you force it right. into a sort of 3D shape, it, it uh, just bumps them off the old- uh, But is it, le is it ever left off of actual globes? Like we had a globe at home when I was a kid. No, it's not left off globes. I, that I would be did that you, would be you, quite a slight to be. Did left you also off have it. like an old timey library? Is that where you had it and that sort of thing? <laughs> Piers, that that is bloody hilarious, and I I'm I'm finally happy that, that on this pod we've got a segment where <laughs> New Zealand are, are getting some comeuppance because we seem to do nothing but praise them from Catherine's sexy accents to even me praising them for their wizards. But that's that's on the rugby team. No, okay, all right, I get it. I get New it. New Zealand it. heavy on this podcast though. Well, they could stop COVID, but no one knows they're there, so no one. <laughs> yeah, knows. yeah. If a, if a COVID fair. case disappears in New Zealand, uh, okay. Oh, I political. gave up five minutes ago, Adam. <laughs> I know. Um, <laughs> the podcast. Okay, I'm I'm starting a new um a new segment. What? I think. 
Hot. You know, we'll nice. see. Um, it's called Uncommon Companies. And uh, I'm going to look at big companies that are like kind of brands, big businesses, brands that you associate with a country and talk about their history. <laughs> this sounds really boring <laughs> now that I'm pitching it. Um, but let's try it. Because one came up the other day that I was pretty interested in. It's Herod's. Um, which is, oh, yeah, we yeah. talked a little bit about what happened yeah. to Harrods, but I want to, I want to dig a bit deeper because we almost, uh, attributed, uh, the ownership and where it was started to the wrong person. So in 1824, a guy, a 25-year-old guy named Charles Henry Herod established a little business and he did not call it Herod's. <laughs> <laughs> So when now let's <laughs> I love that you find that funny. What did he call it? The like general store? He called it um hang on. Herod I have to search for this. <laughs> Adam, Adam with... if we've learned anything from Catherine's segments, we can't ask questions. <laughs> no, we Herod and Wicking Linen Drapers Retail. Oh. Okay, that's reasonable. So yeah. I guess it, it's like nice was shortened. Too. Um <laughs> Uh, but this was like, it was mostly a draper store. So that's um, textiles and dry goods. But it had a bunch of different things. And, and, and so Herod's, the original Herod's, what it was is still what it is today, which is like multiple different um, uh, goods and services. Like an um, apartment store? <laughs> otherwise known. I mean, you could simplify it that way, but I feel like... Uh, I like to do <laughs> some stores have been referred to like that. <laughs> uh, uh, how come this isn't how other people's segments go? It <laughs> feels like okay. So then he got confident, and in 1834, about 10 years later, he he I established. A... <laughs> <laughs> I always add my own color. <laughs> um, he he started a wholesale grocery store. Um, and but the result it of a, confidence. <laughs> <laughs> and he was feeling particularly optimistic <laughs> one day. Hang on, it doesn't go great. So it and and it had a special interest in tea. Okay, oh. so um, that's another association. So it it did really really well, and it ended up having a bunch of famous clientele like Oscar mm. Wilde, oh. uh, Charlie Chaplin, Noel Coward. Um, Sigmund Freud, A. A. Milne, okay, and many members many of the British. Um, Alan, T I don't know who they are. They no women. They weren't allowed to be women. famous then. There's women on this list, but I don't know who they are. So, <laughs> Catherine. So, <laughs> sorry, I, you know what? That there was a lot. Okay, so this is a grocery store that had all these awesome, these like famous clientele and it was really well thought of and it even served the British royal family and then it burned down to the ground. Um, Overconfidence. So it's not <laughs> <laughs> Overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. It burned down in 1883. Um, but Which was how many years after Canada was formed? <laughs> I can't. No, but it mad. Um, so, oh my God. So, okay, so, we'll let it Ch Charles Herod. Um, so at this point, this is the son of the original uh, Henry. Wait, what was his name? <laughs> I think he went by Charles. Hank. No, he was Charles. Oh. Wait, it might be the same guy. <laughs> Hank Harrod? Could be Junior. <laughs> An unknown Charles had a store burned down. And so, but what I wanted to say was that somehow he still manages managed to make all of his Christmas deliveries. Wait, I have so much more. So <laughs> it was just a really big deal. Like his store burned down, but he was like such a like like upright citizen and like oh small business owner that all these like clients like still got their groceries at Christmas. Okay. No one cares. Um, <laughs> so anyway, eventually in a chance meeting, um, he ends up selling his interest in the store for like 120,000 pounds via the stock market. He met a businessman and then that new company was called Harrods Stores Limited. Wasn't there something with Egypt or something? I'm still in the 1800s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're in five. Yeah, okay. <laughs> should you do a part I don't, two, maybe? Like I don't think time? it helped your cause that you should be able to do like in the beginning it's kind of, of a, time. It's kind of a cliffhanger ending <laughs> if we stop here. 
I I would like it. It's like like, with the veggie butt. (laughs) This is cool, though. In in 1898, Harrods debuted England's first moving staircase, otherwise known as... And an escalator. escalator. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, we can just the skip right. And AKA then escalator. Some stuff happened. Muhammad Al Fayed <laughs> Muhammad owned it <laughs> for a while. <laughs> we get we get that he was confident on one day in the 1860s, and then you skip a whole century. <laughs> and then an Egyptian buys it. It's quite a well, quite a story. And then yada yada yada. 2020 uh it's just i think the sun died and it 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 the, the stocks went to the the london stock exchange mm. and it and it became it was taken over by other people just to clarify um, this is the sun that may or may not be called charles <laughs> correct let's okay. see it went by either chuck chuck or hank chuck, we're not sure or hank or henry i think i think the son was named charles and the father was named charles that's the confusion well that happened that um, could be charles jr I th- oh. i'm pretty sure um Carl so i i don't want to be overcoming in case in case like we have listeners we, that- we want your place burning down don't get overconfident <laughs> <laughs> okay but anyway um eventually like in the 1980s <laughs> skipped a I'm just doing a workout or something. (laughs) Okay. Muhammad Al Fayed. I had to turn something on, sorry. He 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 bought it and uh and then eventually it's it was sold in the two thousands to Qatar Holdings. So but you know, there's some interesting stuff in between there, but I think I actually hit the main point. (laughs) Uncommon wealth. Okay. Uh sorry, Jim. Last segment, here we go. Uh all right, so I've got a fun, some fun, a fun fact, um, and I'm springboarding off uh, some information Adam shared a couple of weeks ago, which was the, uh, I, I can't remember the specifics, but you were talking about the French broadcasting rules and they're allowed to basically swear on in, French in, TV. Yeah, French Canadian. Oh, sorry, fr- yeah. French Canadian TV yeah. in Canada. Um, and I actually looked into when the first, like the swearing in, in Commonwealth, or in this case, English TV, and the, the first time the F word was said on British TV, wow. it was said by uh, a woman named Miriam Margoyles, <gasps> woman. which you may actually know because she is actually a famous actress. Um, you may know her. She pray, plays Professor Sprout in the Harry oh. Potter movies. Oh, yes. Uh, okay. She was on Blackadder. I mean, she's, she's a very successful actress. Um, yeah. Yeah. Gosh, she was what happened first, to her? But it, she, so this thing, it, wasn't, it didn't have anything to do with her acting career. She said it, uh, and it was, so to clarify, this was, this was the first time it was used, but it was not intentional. It was not the first intentional use. She was at Cambridge at the time, at university, and she was on, uh, there was a TV show called University Challenge, which basically just pitted two university teams against each other in a quiz of just general knowledge quizzes, uh, quiz questions. And she was on it, and she got a question wrong, and very loudly, like, like a very, went, fuck. Uh, <laughs> so they, they bleeped the actual F word, but as like, mm. you could, you could really clearly see that that's what she'd said. Um, wow. so I can't was, believe that's the first time that happened. That is the first, sorry. And this is in 1962, just to give the, some, the, the date range. I guess that's there. kind of close that after sense. the start of TV. Yeah. TV started in 1961. So <laughs> it's a, <laughs> <laughs> It all adds up. It all, it all adds up. So, so I actually did a bit of reading about Miriam. Um, and you should definitely go check her out. She is a bloody hilarious character. She's a, and she speaks, she's got a very sort of posh English accent. She speaks quite formally and she speaks very well, but she, uh, she's very blue. She tells like, she just tells uh, filthy stories and she's a, uh, so you can tell she's one of those people that it just has a zest for life. Like she is so lovable. And there's a bunch of clips of her on the Graham Norton show telling the most like obscene stories, like how she, that, there's one that she jerked off a soldier that she met in a field. There's oh another one. Like that. And that's not uh, even- We've all been by, there. Yeah, yeah, that's not even by far the most uh, obscene story. But she also, uh, she swears a fair bit. So as I mentioned, she was the, prof- uh, she played Professor Sprout in the Harry Potter films. And in the second film, they were all still like, you know, like 11, these are all, all the kids. Um, but so they actually had to like, they, they implemented basically a swear jar because she had such oh a potty mouth. Oh my gosh. <laughs> And they, they didn't awesome. want to swearing around all the kids. So they actually, every time she swore on set, she had to donate one pound to a, a specific like wildlife preservation charity. 
and so which I thought was great. And she's like, you know, she's she's sort of saying they did very well <laughs> those years that we were filming. That's awesome. Um, that was such a cool end to that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I I then looked into uh, a little bit of the swearing on American uh, TV in America. It was the the first time shit was used uncensored and intentionally on TV was in 1999, an episode of Chicago Hope. And two years later, South Park did an episode titled called It Hits the Fan, where they said shit a total of 162 times <laughs> and displayed it written 38 times. All it took was the tech crash. Oh my but, uh, God. So that's the, yeah. So Miriam Margal, first time accidentally saying the F word on in, awesome. uh, in British TV. That's awesome. The Trailblazer. The podcast. Like the Empire, we're almost done. We hope that you've had lots of fun. Was it relevant? Probably not. But thanks for giving this part a shot. Stay tuned for the end of Uncommon Wealth. The podcast. Stay tuned for Uncommon But I just don't think there's like, is, is roller hockey that organized here? No, a... because we have better things. Oh, to do. I used to pay for a membership at the U.S. inline skating. Uncommon takes. Well, South Park is also on uh, on cable <laughs> versus what was your, what was that other show on? Uh, like, that's a good point. The no, networks but, but, the networks have stricter rules than cable. That's true, but it's still yeah, that's a good point because it's the FCC for the networks, right? And I mean, that still is, feels like they would have had to pay some fines or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know what happened to them, but it was like it was allowed, again, in air quotes. Yeah. But as I said, two years and they went from the first ever to South Park doing it 200 times that's in insane. a 20-minute episode. Pretty wild. Uncommon Wealth, the podcast.